um, with me today, so I'm Greg Schreiber, by the way, and I think most of you on the call, uh, I think I know most of you, but uh, thank you guys for joining. Um, I also have my partner, Brian, behind the scenes with me. Um, he's going to be supporting me, answering questions. Uh, if you guys have questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can either raise your hand or um, ask a question. And this is a small enough group where if you have uh, questions, I could probably unmute your line as well and we can make it as interactive as possible. So let's get through the uh, plumbing here, the uh, webinar schedule. So we've done uh, a three-part schedule on our my.vaspian.com portal. This is the second one. Uh, we did a previous uh, webinar on call reporting and leaderboards. That's available on the Vaspian.com website under um, uh, webinars on the upper right-hand corner. Today, we're going to be talking about call queuing as well as our web-based queue monitor product. And um, the uh, next month, we're going to be doing a session on our call recording, call monitoring, and our introduction to speech analytics product, which is a, a really neat uh, service. So today's agenda, what do we want to get through? So uh, understanding call queuing, what do they do? What do call queues do? Who do they benefit? And like, what are the best people to use them? Um, how does queuing work? I just want to get into a little bit of the, the, uh, um, the background about how they work and a couple of the different uh, algorithms that you can use to distribute calls. Then um, top five best practices for using queues. There's a bunch of do's and don'ts that you should do when you're using a queue and I want to just cover those. Then we're going to do um, an interactive demo. If you guys have a cell phone handy next to you, uh, it would be great. We've got a test queue set up that, uh, and I'm going to give you guys a telephone number so that you can call in. That way we can see the actual queue. Um, uh, in, we can see you guys dialing into the queue and you can see how calls are, are stacking up and so forth. And then um, we're going to show you the queue monitor. The queue monitor, of course, is what shows you in real time on your computer what's going on. And then we'll get into a question and answer. So, uh, what is call queuing? Call queuing is basically, we've all been in these things, if you call the airlines or if you call um, any big customer service organization, you get put in queue, and most of those experiences are negative experiences, And uh, but uh, Vaspian's got some tools that help you so that you can always make sure that you're providing your customer with the best customer service and making sure you're not keeping people in queues too long. So all a queue is going to do is basically put calls in order, in the order in which they've been received, and um, callers are going to hear uh, some sort of queue messaging. Uh, they may hear a position announcement telling them where they are in queue, I'm number three in queue, or I'm number five in queue. And, um, and then they're going to distribute the calls to your agents, the people answering the calls, in the order that they're received. So what are the benefits of using a queue? Um, first, of all, first of all, you can answer more calls with less people. Um, because let's face it, most of the time calls that come in are um, we're managing for these peak periods. So uh, you get five calls all at once and then everybody's got to drop everything to be able to answer the phone. Um, with a queue, we can kind of round that out a little bit better and um, let the person who's answering that call handle the call that they're on to completion and then move on to the next call. The uh, also, by dedicating resources for your inbound calls, you're, you're creating fewer distractions for the rest of the office. Instead of having 15 phones ringing all over the place, you now have, um, you now have calls ringing to the people that you want most answering those calls and that who are best suited to answer those calls. And you're not distracting everybody wondering, hey, uh, am I supposed to get that? Uh, is somebody going to get that? All those typical questions that go through your head when you hear the phones ringing. Lastly, 
um, you can evenly or more evenly distribute calls amongst employees. So we all, have, I'm sure, know of instances where uh, there's the one person who answers 50 calls and the other person who answered five, and uh, uh, with a queue and using one of the one algorithm, you can make sure that that is distributed more fairly. Um, so where are call queues used best? So businesses or areas within a business where call volume can be bursty or intense. So the first thing that comes to mind and some of the audience that's on here are medical offices. And so when you think about medical offices, you think about Monday morning at 9 a.m. Everybody calls the doctor. They're all trying to make a, a, an appointment because they got sick over the weekend or something happened over the weekend. Or if you're like me and you ski, you tear your ACL over the weekend, and you got to go see the doctor. The, uh, the, uh, the, that's the, the intense time for uh, a doctor's office. If you call them at Tuesday at 3 o'clock, guess what? You'll probably get right through. And um, so cues help us to manage those really bursty traffic periods. Of course, inbound call centers. And um, in, it doesn't have to be just a formal call center like uh, like when you think call center, but these could be places within your business where the call center resides. So whether that's a customer service department with the four people there or um, a reception area where you've got a receptionist there. And, and to back her up, you can put a queue there so that as she's answering calls, and uh, she doesn't have to worry about looking at her phone saying, oh shoot, there's two other lines ringing, what do I do, what do I do? Do I move over to this call and put this person on hold? Let the queue do its work. Queue the call up, finish what you're doing, move on to the next call. So how, do que how does queuing work? And, and this is just kind of the plumbing behind the scenes in terms of how you can set these up. And I don't want to go into too much detail because I'll bore you guys to death here. But uh, from a topical perspective, queues are designed to take calls in the order of the received and then distribute them to an available agent based on some sort of strategy. And in the meantime, the caller is hearing music on hold or whatever the messages that you have. And, um, um, so that that and and if there's no calls in the queue, the phone is simply going to ring to the agent. So you don't have to. People aren't waiting for uh, and listening, sitting in queue. If we have available people to pick up the phone, if they're there, they're simply going to hear their phone ring. and They can pick that up. So there's kind of three different approaches to doing this on the Baspian system. One is uh, what's called a broadcast group. So in this methodology, all phones ring at the same time. And the first one who picks up the call gets that call. So if you've got person A and B are on the phone and only person C is available, their phone is going to ring. Person A and B are already on a call, so their phone is not going to ring. C can pick it up. If, if C um, didn't pick it up for any reason, as soon as A got off the phone or B got off the phone, their phone's going to start ringing. They can pick up that call. This is kind of the most common that we see in in a um, <coughs> queuing scenario. Um, the next one is what I call a primary answer. So think of this as you've got one party who this is the person we really want to be answering the calls, and the um, uh, it's always going to start with person A. And so if person A is on the phone, then it will engage person B after a set number of rings. And if person B doesn't pick up, then it's going to move to person C after a set number of rings. And all calls will follow the same pattern, and it's always going to start with A. So that's got use cases like <clears throat> think of that reception area that I talked about where I have a receptionist and maybe I have a backup receptionist. I don't necessarily want to engage the backup receptionist unless she really is busy. <coughs> Excuse me. The last one is more of like a round robin. So this tries to more evenly distribute calls based on a set order. So um, if a call goes unanswered after X amount of rings, then it's going to move to the next person 
in that sequence. And it's, it's going to ring in the sequential order based on who answered last. So similar to the last model, right, it's going to move from A, and then if A doesn't answer after X rings, it's going to move to B. And if B doesn't answer after X rings, it's going to move to C. And uh, But the second call is not like, so let's say that that call is completed, A answered that call, she took that call. Well, the next phone call is going to start at B, person B, and they're going to be able to take that call. And then once they're done, the next call is going to move to person C. So it just tries to more evenly distribute those calls uh, based on uh, um, some order that we set within the system. So let's get into the uh, what I just put this as the top five best practices for call queuing. Call queuing is not for everybody, and it's not for every scenario. But in the right scenarios, it's a really good thing. But there are some things that are do's and don'ts that, that you got to remember when you implement a queue. And when you talk about um, implementing these, you got to make sure that we train the people that are answering the phones. And we got to make sure that we train the people who are managing this because the behaviors of using a queue are slightly different than if I'm not using a queue. In a medical office, like what we um, described before, this is a very common one. You usually have a couple of people that's a, that are answering the phones, and then you got a check-in and a check-out counter type of thing. And, um, and you've got a lot going on, and people are are um, used to just picking up a phone, putting a call on hold, moving to the next one. So when we're using queues, we've got to train them that they're going to be, they're going to answer the calls in the order that they come in, they're going to finish on the call that they're on, and they're going to move on to the next one. So moves to point number two, which is telephone agents must be dedicated to answering the phone during the time that they're logged into the queue. So when they're logged into the queue, they're, the queue is knows that they're there and says, that, okay, hey, we've got calls. I'm going to send it to you because you're sitting at your desk and you're the person that's supposed to be answering this. When you're done, your phone's not going to You're not going to get multiple calls at the same time. You're going to be on the one call. Your peers are going to be assisting you. And when you're off of that call, then the next call will ring in. If for some reason you need to step away, you should log out of that queue, which gets to our third point, which on the phones themselves, on the Baspian system, you can add a button, which is called a join leave queue button. And um, I'm going to try to get through today in less than a half an hour. And I, But if I have time, I'm going to show you on the phone how I've programmed one of these. and. Uh, um, add a join leave queue button just basically will sign you in and out. So if I have to run to the restroom, if I have to go to lunch, or maybe I just got to step away from my desk for a minute, I sign out of the queue. That way the queue is not trying to send me calls. It's not adding unnecessary hold time to the customer experience because it thinks that I'm at my desk. I've signed out of that queue. And this is something that becomes really important that you have to ingrain into the staff that are using a queue. Number four, use, uh, use position announcements to notify the caller of the position in queue. I might not want to wait in line if I'm number seven. If I call on Monday morning and it's, uh, it tells me I'm in position number seven, well, I also have things to do on Monday morning. Maybe I'll call back at 11 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's just a polite way to, to notify the person that, hey, you guys are busy. And uh, in the demo that I have set up, I have a queue reminder set to every 30 seconds. So if um, you guys are in queue for more than 30 seconds, you'll hear it say, You're, you are currently number one in line, or uh, whatever the phone system says. I forget. She's a nice Canadian lady, so she probably sounds better than I do. Anywho, um, lastly, and most importantly, let the queue do the work. Agents should handle one call at a time. And this is what I was getting at where uh, I started to talk about that medical example where you have um, 
people at, that sit at a check-in and a check-out counter, and then I have my two people that are answering the calls. The uh, we're not if I'm answering a call and I pick it up and I put a call on hold, like what people would do prior to using a queue, the phone system is going to try to send me the next call and then the next call. So if I do that, I'm now making the queue irrelevant because I'm answering calls and putting them on hold. So let the queue do the work. You handle the call that you're on. When you're done with the call that you're on, move on to the next call. If you're not ready for the next call, just hit your leave queue button. It's going to ring to the next person. When you are ready, sign back in. Away you go. So just stuff that I wanted to cover. Um, certainly, if you guys are interested in, in using queues, talk to me or talk to some of the Vaspian staff, and we can help you with these things. It's just uh, we've done this a long time, and uh, you learn the, the, the do's and don'ts type of thing and uh, the realities of what happens when you implement these things. So <clears throat> understanding the queue monitor, we're going to get into this. So uh, I just wanted to show you uh, uh, the queue monitor is going to show you calls that are, are uh, live in queue. It's going to show you the number of calls that we've received in the last hour, or maybe you want to look at it in the last two hours, or maybe you want to look at it across the whole day. Um, it's going to give you those stats. It'll tell you what the average hold time is, that average queue time there. <clears throat> um, max queue time, that's going to be the person who waited the longest. Uh, so that's important to know because you're going to manage your your uh, um, your queue and the staff that you have working it based around these things. And then um, abandonment rate becomes very important. Abandonment rate are um, out of those 17 calls that came in, two people chose to just hang up and uh, they didn't want to wait. And so that's what service level is all about. It's a calculated field that is basically your call count minus your abandon divided by the total call count and then times 100 to give it to you as a percentage. But these things are what becomes important when it ter when in terms of uh, looking at the queue monitor and seeing what goes on within your queue. So let's get out of PowerPoint land and um, let's move over to the actual queue monitor itself. So uh, I can simply go to manage my account off the Vaspian website. Once I get in here, I can go to the modern view in the my Vaspian portal. Um, I have my password set to save, so it, it already uh, logged me in. But if you um, didn't have your save, you're just going to type in your email and your password. You're going to click on this live board here, and <clears throat> then you're going to click on your Q monitor. And I'm just going to try to get this to a good uh, resolution. And I've got a couple of different queues built here. So you can see I've got Mark's queue, I've got Webinar queue, I've got uh, a couple of other ones that I've built. We're just going to go to this Webinar queue, I'm gonna click Submit. <coughs> and here you can see in the upper left-hand corner that <coughs> we have two agents in this agent stat. So we have two agents in our queue. Um, and we have one person logged in. You can see that extension 151 is logged in. I can see that based on the green silhouette here that's here. Um, I can see that he's currently not on a phone call. If he was on a phone call, that would be green. Um, if I clicked on this little box here, I could see a summary of how many calls that he's made or received. So I guess this one, 152, is a better example. Um, they've been on three calls. Their talk time has been 11 seconds, and their average talk time was three seconds. Obviously, these are test calls, so your your uh, information will be different. Under call count, in our queue, we're looking at this over the last hour. If we wanted to look at this over a longer period, we can simply do this. All these stats will update. Um, so we've had four calls come into our queue and we've had one of those abandoned. That gave us a 75% service level. So we've answered three-fourths of those calls. That's 
a law of small numbers, but if you had uh, if you had four, uh, 30 or 40 calls answered, that's probably not so good. You've got to take a look at what's going on. Um, currently, there's zero calls in queue, and we're going to change that in a moment. So if you have a cell phone, I'm going to put a number up in a second. The uh, average queue time that we have here is 32 seconds. The longest somebody waited was 51 seconds. So for a good time, call the Aspian Q hotline. So I've got a Q hotline set up here that um, if you dial into this 923-4101, we're going to be able to see calls start to come in in that queue. And I'm just going to minimize this. I think everybody sees it's 923-4101. Three, is that number, and that's area code 716-923-4101, I should say, because I see that there's a couple of people from out of town. So hopefully everybody saw that. So moving over here, I can look. I see that we've got one caller in queue. And so as we see calls stack up here, I'll let a couple of them stack up. So there we go. We've got two calls in queue, three calls in queue. Cool. So I can see that Kevin's on the phone right now. He's on the phone with somebody who called in from New York City, and, um, and he's currently talking to that person. And looks like somebody may have dropped out of queue, but the uh, um, so you can see this in real time as as this happens. So let's take a look. He's still on the, that same call. Um, <clears throat> maybe I wanted to sign in here, and I have a webcam. Hold on, let me see if I can show you this. I'm going to try to show you my webcam here. Um, I'm a little bit zoomed in, but hold on. Maybe I can fix this quickly. Hold on a second. Oh, it's pretty blurry now, but well. There we go. So I can now see that uh, once I, on my phone here, I have a button that's labeled Join Leave Group or Join Leave Queue. So if I wanted to sign into this queue, I can simply hit this button. It's going to sign me into that queue. And Should be. There's, I think two people in queue. It should be ringing me. I'm just looking at this here. Yeah, it's updating. Oh, there it goes. So I could see here's a call coming in into queue. And so I can simply, if I wanted to answer that, I think I can answer it. I just put it on hold here, you can see that now both of us are on queue calls. This one is me. This is another caller here. And um, so if I simply was done with this call, I can hang up here. If now I see another call coming in, uh, maybe uh, I, I'm ready for it. I can just simply wait a second if I'm not. I pick up that call and now you could see that we've got zero in queue. So we've worked our way through all of those calls. Now, some of you guys might be looking at, I'm just going to close out of here. Some of you guys might be looking at these call counts here that you see, because you saw a bunch of calls coming in. Now, these are updated every five minutes. So a couple of these fields are calculated fields. So the in queue field is in real time. The um, the login, log out, the phone status, the, these are in real time, but the average queue, the max queue, the service level, the call count, and abandoned, those are updated every five minutes. So 
So as, uh, uh, as it progresses, you'll see that calls will pop in there, and you don't have to refresh anything, but it'll just show you that. So I kind of got through a lot of what I wanted to talk about in terms of queuing.